Hey, Marriage After God friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. I'm Aaron Smith. Today, we got another special episode for you. We recorded this episode just before we had our fourth child, who is now uh, one month away from being one year old. And uh, he's growing. He's walking now. Uh, His name's Truett. He's incredible. And this episode, we recorded it just before we had him. And it was to share some fears that we had about our family growing, uh, but to encourage the audience uh, who haven't had any children yet, who are planning to have children, who are about to have their second, third, fourth child, just to talk biblically about how we navigate fears in our life and fears of our family growing. And so we pray that this episode blesses you today. Before we get into the episode, I did want to share with you how we are giving away a free uh, download to encourage your date life with your spouse. And what it is, is we created this 52 date night conversation starters ebook. And so we, we, we always talk about on this podcast having date nights. And so we created a document that you can take with you and you guys can use uh, one conversation starter a week uh, for 52 weeks for a year uh, on every date night. So that way you can uh, go deeper on your date nights and have uh, deeper conversations about what it means to be a marriage after God, how God can use you. And uh, we just, we give you prompts for 52 date nights. It's completely free. Go to datenightconversations.com. That's datenightconversations.com. Give us your name, email, and boom, you'll have our free conversation starters uh, ebook. So I hope you get that today. Enjoy it. And uh, also enjoy this episode about three fears of a growing family. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe the Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us in this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Before we get started today, because this topic is kind of surrounded around a growing family and having kids, I wanted to share that we do have resources for parents called 31 Prayers for My Son and for My Daughter. And these are great resources for you um, to pray over your children. There are 31 prayers in each book um, talking about different topics in the child's life. And there's also journal pages so that after each prayer, you can um, just make it more personal. And we've had some positive feedback about these resources. Parents are really loving them. So um, make sure you get a copy. Well, first off, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, listening, and we want to encourage you to grab your Bible so that as we go through scripture, you can participate. So the first thing we're going to do before we start talking about these fears that a lot of us go through in our marriages as we start growing our family with children um, is I just want to go straight to scripture and read the God's word about fear in our lives. And this is in 2 Timothy. This is Paul talking to Timothy and encouraging him in his ministry. And he says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So I just want to start off as we go into this idea of the fears that we all experience and explain that God has given us, just like he's given Timothy, just like Paul reminds Timothy, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and self-control. And then the second verse I want to start us off with is in Psalms 127. And I just want to get a biblical godly perspective on children. And in Psalm, the psalmist writes, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So God's perspective in this one verse, there's hundreds of verses that talk about who children are to us and to God, is that they're a heritage, that they're a blessing, that they're a weapon wielded in the hands of parents. Um, for his purposes. I'm so glad that we started with those two verses because I think above all else, it's so important to remember what God's perspective and heart is toward children. So that as we move forward and navigate through these fears, um, you know, how do we 
how do we remember what God believes is true about yeah. a growing family? And as we always say um, to the Christian marriages out there, that we found our uh, a marriage after God founds their marriage on the Bible, yeah. on the Word of God. We don't do it in our feelings. We don't um, operate in our opinions. We don't operate in um, our ideas. Um, what we try and do uh, to the best of our abilities through the spirit that God's put in us is we run to the word of God. So as we talk through these, these fears that we're dealing with right now, our way of dealing with them is the word of God. And so that's why we encourage you to have your Bible. And, and as we go through these fears that we're going to bring up right now, we're going to try and find scripture to combat those fears. So Aaron, um, you walked us through those, those two scriptures, which again, were very powerful. And they're ones that I'm actually really familiar with, but how do we look at our lives and use those scriptures to encourage us in a practical way. So I, the, the first practical thing, um, the Bible tells us to meditate on God's word. And that word meditate, it's, it comes from this idea of like a cow chewing cud. And it says we chew it, we mull, over, mull it over and over and over again. And we continue to bring it up and remind ourselves of it. And we go back to it over and over and over again. We don't just hear it one time and then all of a sudden, oh, that's just into my heart and I've got it forever. Um, that might happen in some cases, but for the most part, like for you, you have to be reminded, yeah. especially when you're going through um, hormone changes yeah. um, because you're going through hormone changes and that can feel totally chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, and so instead of just trying to address the symptoms and like, well, just, you need to change the way you're thinking. You need to, which is how I tend to approach you, um, which is not always effective. Mm -hmm. um, but meditating on scripture. So when we're in those moments of the things that we're specifically going to talk about, we go back to those scriptures and be like, well, I'm thinking this way and I feel this way, but this is the truth. And I just need to remind myself of that, even though it doesn't feel like the truth. Mm -hmm. That's good. So even having like maybe these scriptures written out, on hand so that they're next to your bedstand or in the kitchen window or, or some, on our chalkboard, like or on right a chalkboard there, yeah. in your, in your house somewhere. I think that would be really encouraging for those listening to know that a, a very practical way of being reminded of these scriptures is to just put them in front of you. Yeah. Have them in hand, memorize them. So one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk about this topic today about fears of a growing family is because this is exactly where we've been for the last month. I am right almost into the second trimester of our fourth baby. We're so excited about that. And um, I've just been wrestling with having some fears about our family getting a, a little bit bigger. And I don't know for those of you listening, if you guys have jumped in and had any kids yet, or maybe mm -hmm. you're on two or three, maybe some of you are on six or seven, like some of our friends. Yeah. But uh, I, I know that some of these fears that we're going to talk about are super relatable. And so hopefully it's encouraging for you to hear uh, what we're going to talk about today. So why don't you share with us um, something, some fears that you're going through right now? Because although we, we learn from scripture in 2 Timothy that we don't have a spirit of fear, uh, when hormones rise up, when your mm -hmm. body starts changing, when you start realizing the logistics of the day and you, yep. and you have an overwhelming morning and, you know, they come up. And it's our job to navigate that with yeah. God. So, so yeah, a lot of the things that I've been wrestling with is feeling like I can't handle it. I can't manage my home or keep up with the demands of all of the dishes or feeding everyone or keeping up with the laundry and just little things like you that. You know, off the floor after meals. <laughs> yeah, from, all, from our youngest spilling food <laughs> on the floor. So, yeah, so... Um, having to um, meet all of those demands of the day and then looking to our future and saying, and we're going to have another baby being added to the picture. And it just feels overwhelming. Mm -hmm. That's just one fear that I've been wrestling with. So you're talking about not being able to handle it, that just the, the demands of the day of Feeling life, exhausted emotionally, mentally, physically. Which are real things because mm -hmm. your body has limitations. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when I am pregnant again. Exactly. And your home has limitations mm -hmm. and your time has limitations. Um, it just, the, the thing that I immediately thought of is, is acknowledging the weakness. Because mm -hmm. we all, you know, moms out there. <laughs> You look at any Instagram about moms. We want to be superheroes. Superhero. <laughs> like you're the superhero mom and you're like, oh my gosh, she's got a beautiful Inst Instagram feed and her home's always perfect and her kids are beautiful and wonderful and act perfectly all the time. And that's just not reality. We, we, I think you might have a expectation of yourself that isn't a re real expectation. And since you can't live up to it, it hurts. It does hurt. And it breaks you and mm -hmm. it makes you feel more emotional and like a failure. Mm -hmm. um, so one, things that, one thing that husbands could be doing is reminding your wives that they are great. 
and that um, the things you're doing are wonderful and you don't have to do everything perfectly. Um, another thing we should be doing as husbands is cultivating an environment in the home where we're helping. Um, that, uh, you know, I can't help all the time because I have a job. Um, many husbands, they have full-time jobs and uh, I know a lot of wives, um, moms might have jobs also mm -hmm. that might be adding to the stress also, but cult cultivating an environment where, you know, you're helped. Yeah. And I remember reminding you this morning, even when you were dealing with this, I said, I said, babe, I'm here with you also. Yeah. Like you don't need to feel like you have to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, but the weakness part of this, it reminds me of the scripture of when Paul in second Corinthians is talking about a thorn that's been given to him in his side. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's either an ailment or someone who's, um, pestering him and we don't know exactly what it is. He never says exactly what it is, but Paul tells us the torment that this thorn is causing him. And this is what, uh, God's word to him was about this weakness in second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine, it says, but he, God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm. Um, and then it goes on to say, Paul says, therefore I, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so reminding ourselves of like, it's okay to be weak. We're human. Weakness is a part of who we are. We're in this weak flesh that has cravings and desires and hormones and um, brokenness. And, but we have a savior and we have a God that's given us this Holy spirit that we can actually operate in his strength. And then actually when we recognize our weakness and we humble ourselves, we actually can glorify him in his strength. And it says, I will, Paul says, I'll boast all the more gladly in my weakness. So my wife can actually say, you know, recognizing that I can't do all of this reminds me of my need for God and his peace and his comfort and that I need to run to him. Because did you run to him, you know, in those times that we, when you feel the most weak? Not always. Is that your first? It's not usually my first. No, but that's what God wants is he wants us. It's not my first thing ever. I usually go to like my own strengths and my own like, oh, I'm going to get some consulting. I'm going to get, I don't run to him first. I don't fall on my face and say, okay, Lord, I cannot do this today. Mm -hmm. I feel like we continue to keep ourselves trying and striving for that ideal of perfection or mm -hmm. expectation that we've placed on ourselves that we don't slow down enough to to do this, what you're saying. Right. And the idea is that we can recognize our own weaknesses and our own limitations. Do you remember a long time ago on our, our road trip, or actually we were driving up to the mountains and we were talking about just time and strength and energy. And I was uh, telling you how frustrated I am because there's all these things that I want to do. And you told me. And that was so long ago. You st you're right back there. I know. <laughs> um, but I, I explained, I said, being human, we're limited. We can only hold so much weight up. We can only um, speak so many words. We only have so many hours in a day. We uh, we only can we can only stay awake so long that if we want to accomplish something over here, then there inevitably will have to be other things that will have to be laid aside. Yeah, it's just the reality. Mm -hmm. So a good example of this is if we want to have if let's say you want to spend quality time with all your kids, right? There I mean, might, there the might, dishes probably go. there might have to be some dishes in the sink. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, personally, I would rather you spend some quality time with our kids mm. and us. Oh, I think that's really important to, to acknowledge real quick, just so that people listening can understand this. So understanding each other's expectations of, of what we're called to do in the home. So knowing that, right. knowing that you're okay with dishes in the sink helps me understand that I right. can spend that time with the kids and I don't have to rush to go do the dishes in order to right. please you. Like ultimately right. we need to understand. Or please yourself because you could easily see like right. a clean house as the most important thing for the day right. and drop the ball on right. the children. Mm -hmm. um, and then you still might feel like <laughs> failure at the end of the day. Yeah. You, you have a clean house and kids that are buying for attention. So I do want to encourage those, those listening that um, it's really important for a husband and wife to um, vision together and mm -hmm. to talk about expectations and figure out what is, right what are priorities for your family? And this brings me back again to a husband cultivating a, a safe environment in the home. If you come home from work and you're bothered that the dishes are dirty, yet your wife had spent all day with your children and like had taught them and loved on them and fed them and took care of them and took them on trips and got, did d daddy or did um, play dates and then you Either might need let to let the dishes go or clean them <laughs> or clean them. Uh, and that's kind of the, or find a time to give her time to herself. If, if she likes to take care of the house and just what, take the kids and you go spend time with the kids and let her 
have an hour or two to herself to do what she wants. Yeah. If if like I know that sometimes you just want to clean the house. Yeah. Like there's hey Erin, go play with the kids. I want to just clean. Yeah. Especially because I like the way that I do it. And, so and since we're a team, and since we're a team, I should be like, absolutely, deal. I'll take the kids. <laughs> we're gonna go to the park. We're gonna go for a drive. We're gonna be gone. Yeah. You won't hear from us. Um, but husbands, cultivating an environment that's that's healthy and safe for your wife and your the mother of your children, because if she feels like you know you expect her to be everything, you know, perfect for you, mm-hmm. perfect for your, her kids, perfect for your home, you're gonna break her. Mm-hmm. And this is something I have to learn, and we also have to balance. But it also takes communication, mm-hmm. uh, you know, talking through these things. And, I, and as we're talking about fears of a growing family, when those conversations come up, where you guys are talking about maybe growing your family, you need to be honest with yourselves and know that your wife might have fears of, well, mm-hmm. I can't do all the demands of the home if we bring another child into the world because I already can't do it. If right is right because saying. like, but. If you're if you're a husband that is just absent, you get home, turn that TV on, you know, get into your your video games. Hopefully, you're not playing video games. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just kind of check out when you get home, and you expect dinner to be ready, and you just you you just view your home time as your sanctuary time, and your wife just kind of keeps going twenty four seven. I wouldn't want to have your kids either. <laughs> that's harsh, but I'm just being honest. But that's the kind of it, men we need to be. If you want to have a marriage after God and one that's free from fears of a growing family, I think it's really important to um, to talk about expectations and to be a team when yeah. considering what things around the ha- house need to be done. Um, when mm-hmm. you do have little kids running around and you want to spend that time with them or or do things that are a priority in your family. Yeah. So you shared with us that you feel like you can't handle it, which is a totally normal and common feeling uh, because of everything in life. Mm-hmm. What's something else that just wells up in you? Just it's those emotions, those those feelings. What else was coming up in you today? So another one was that um, a fear of missing out. So um, we already FOMO. Have, yeah, FOMO. We already have, I have that all the time. <laughs> all the time with, with friends everything. and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a fear of missing out with my children, the ones that we already right. have. So we already have three and I see them growing up and every day I'm just amazed by them. And I just feel like mm-hmm. um, there's been certain seasons where I was either pregnant or had morning sickness where right. I did miss out a little bit. Um, postpartum with Wyatt, that was another one where I felt like I was missing out with Elliot and Olive a little bit. And so I don't want to miss anything in their lives. I just don't. Yeah. And so I'm I, one of my fears is if we have another child, what else am I going to be missing with them right. that maybe I wouldn't have if we didn't have a growing family? And that's a totally legitimate fear that people have. Um, I, it's not unfounded. If you just look at numbers, you look at time. We just talked about this, how we're limited mm-hmm. creatures. We, ha- we don't, we're not infinite. We're finite. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we need to do is I, we need to change our perspective on on things. That's what this whole you know video is about, is is perspective. And uh, if the perspective is unless we can spend equal amount of time with every single child, then we're not going to be giving them what they need. Mm-hmm. Um, I think is inaccurate. Mm. Um, and this this is this is a personal opinion, but I do feel like there's a level of you know if that's the case, then let's just have one kid. Mm. because they can get all of our love. But in reality, like the, the love and the experience that we want our kids to, to ex- have, our oldest, it's going to be inevitable that he learns that the world doesn't revolve around him. Mm-hmm. It's, gonna, it's inevitable that he's going to learn that he has other responsibilities. Like, so where you want to you spend time with our oldest, Elliot, uh, but you also want to spend time with Olive and Wyatt and then the new baby. Well, Elliot needs to learn how to spend time with his siblings. Mm-hmm. And they need to learn how to have alone time and and play well with each other. This is true. One thing that I've been noticing lately in our relationships with our kids is we've been teaching them a lot about how to walk in the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. And so Mm -hmm. it is having siblings does give them the opportunity to learn compassion and learn kindness and learn sharing and gentleness Mm -hmm. and love and all of that. Well, and responsibility. Responsibility. So um, how they participate in the family. Yeah, we can we can easily recognize um, just the spiritual state of our son that he he does feel like he's not getting as much as he used to from us, as much, as much attention. So a couple of things happen. We can recognize that and and make sure that we're being extra intentional with him, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which we do and we try to, and sometimes we, we drop the ball, of course. Um, but then we can also find other ways of redirecting because he's craving attention from us. But usually that's a craving that we that God's wanting, Right. 
And so we can slowly start teaching him about that that desire that he has for that relationship Mm -hmm. and like that he's not going to always get it from us. And that mom isn't the only person to get energy from and all those those feelings met and those needs met. Because what's going to happen is one, two, three, four, five kids, however many kids we have, if every single one of them think that they're owed that same exact amount of attention from you, what are we teaching them? And can you possibly ever fulfill that? No. And no. we're we're essentially teaching them to have that same perspective toward God. They're going to expect... And, uh, you know, that yeah, they're gonna look same at, perspective of, you know, Joe over God here owes me this yeah. or that or, or I deserved it. They'll look at this. Oh, so-and-so ha- has been given so much and they have this ministry and like, he hasn't given me that. Mm. And that's just the wrong perspective. The Bible actually tells us that the entire body is knit together as one unit. And then it says that the lesser parts of the body are glorified and the, the, and the greater parts of the body are brought low mm-hmm. for the sake of equality. So giving him a perspective that he actually can't get everything he wants from mom. He actually, he has to understand that. And he actually can start instead of wanting to just take from mom, he can actually learn how to give to his siblings. Mm -hmm. And so we're teaching him responsibilities in the house. So instead of just going to mom and being mom, 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 can you just spend all the time with me? We're like, actually, Elliot, we need your help. Can you go put trash bags in the trash can? Can you go vacuum the floor? Can you go? you got to be able to trust your kids because Elliot's been stepping up and doing great. And every time we ask him, you know, require him, something of him he's been fulfilling that so it's been great to see the maturity right. in him it's amazing itself. actually he puts the trash bags in every time i ask <laughs> perfectly <laughs> one one thing that you did mention when i shared this fear with you was um the reality that we will miss out even if it was just one kid there are going to be times that we miss out which means the time that we are present we need to be so intentional and that really meant a lot to me which is which is true we again the same way we recognize we are weak mm-hmm and that, and that makes God more strong in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing we recognize is we are going to miss out. Mm-hmm. We can't control everything. We can't have everything. And we have to be okay with that. We have to be okay that dad's gone a lot of the day. But when I'm home, I should not be gone. Right. At home. Even if that means on the couch on your phone. Like you should be present. Right. You should be engaged. Which is something that the Lord convicts of me every single day. I'm trying really hard to not be on, on my phone in front of my kids because I want them to know that I ha- they have my eyes mm, when I'm heart. here. Um, but then that, there's also times when I'm around that I have to say, Daddy's busy. Daddy's busy. <laughs> and you need to go play quietly. You need to color. You need to... Yeah. So just understanding that we cannot be everything and all things to our children. We have to recognize where we're at. That's good. And that missing out is a part of life. Mm-hmm. And that's got to be okay. I know it doesn't feel good, but it's got to be okay. Yeah. So why don't you share with us one more fear that you are currently dealing with knowing that we're about to have four kids? Um, I don't know if everyone can relate to this, but it's just that fear of losing my personal time, the time mm-hmm. that I like to pour into things I'm passionate about. Um, one of them is spending time with the Lord. You know, I feel like with each right. kid, I have to really fight for that time um, or working and blogging. You know, um, mm-hmm. I feel like I have to really- Or time f- with your girlfriends. Or time with my girlfriends. There's uh, just going to get a cup of coffee, you know, and sharing that time with mm-hmm. either myself or, or with a girlfriend. I feel like the thought of bringing another child would mean now I got to find someone that could babysit mm-hmm. Four kids, you know, if I want to go on date night with you, right? That's five dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's two to four hours. It's, it's, it's a, a lot. <laughs> so, um, so being conflicted with, um, am I going to lose more me time? And I know that's really selfish, but it does, it does. But it's come real. Up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so this, I'm going to keep going back to this because it's a balance of like, it'd be easy just to tell you, be like, well, you just got to get over it because that's selfish. But the other ha- side of it is, the Bible tells us husbands to walk with our wives in an understanding way. And it tells us to, to, to love you as Christ loves the church. And it tells us to, to serve you and to honor you and, um, and hold you up, you know, in, in honor. And, um, so on one hand, recognizing selfishness, yeah, recognizing like, well, like this is my lot in life. This is what God's given me. I have children to raise, to know him. And having a positive perspective about and that. Ha- and having a positive perspective, mm-hmm. having a biblical perspective, knowing mm-hmm. that our jobs as mom and dad is to raise children that know and love the Lord. Which is a super powerful purpose. It's the most powerful yeah. purpose, that our kids will actually go to heaven, Yeah. right? Um, but on top of that, how can I, how can you as a husband cultivate an environment for you to thrive in that? 
not that you just hold all the weight of everything because the Bible, remember the Bible tells us that you are the weaker vessel. And then I need to recognize that and be like, I can't just put everything I want on top of my wife and expect her to hold it all up. Mm. That's my job. Mm. I should hold everything up. <laughs> right. So knowing that I, that if, if I want you to just love your role as a mother, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you time to yourself. Do I ever do that for you? Yeah, I was just going to say, I feel like you've been really great at embracing this, this role. <laughs> this pregnancy. You've been, been learning really with each one, but you do recognize a lot faster now when I'm kind of reaching that breaking point or need a breath of fresh air. Just the other day, you were like, you came home for lunch and you were like, hey, you want to go take lunch by yourself? And it felt really awkward saying yes, because I thought to myself, I'm not going to go sit in a restaurant by myself, but I did it and it was great. It was so you came back, she came back, like kicked the door and she's like, hey, hey kids, let's go do something. I missed my kids. <laughs> and so it refreshed that positive perspective. Recharged you, recharged gave you a new me. perspective. So the on one hand, yes, we need to recognize that it's a self-dying that happens every day. Not just in our in our child rearing and be children. okay with that, embrace it, and accept that responsibility from God um, on the wife's part, on, on the, the mother's part, mo- mother's part. Yeah. But on the hus- husband's part is a self dying also that I would lay down my life for my wife and say, you know what, I don't want to sacrifice my time. I'm going to though, because I want you to feel energy and recharged and and also hu- husbands, dads out there, it's our jobs to be leading our family spiritually. Are you giving time for your wife to go and recharge in the word of God So important. with no kids around, not, not in the bathroom when she's on the toilet and the kids are trying to come in. <laughs> uh, this is like serious. Like, do you like, Hey babe, go and just spend an hour or two in the word. And I've, of course that can't happen every day. There's logistics in life, but is it on your mind? Mm-hmm. Are you saying like, man, I need to figure out a way to get my wife to just have some her time. Mm-hmm. And that that's you dying to yourself and your desires and lifting her up. So, it's not just, well, you need to get a right perspective, hun. You need just to tough it out, which she does. I do. But you need to tough it out too, men. You need to lay down your life and say, well, I need to make sure that my wife feels loved, cherished. I need to make sure that she has time for herself so that she can get regenerated. Have a bath. Like, how often it's, I'm like, go take a bath. Yep. It doesn't happen all the time, but like uh, once a week, maybe I just say, I, I'll, I'll draw a bath for you. I'll give you a bath some bomb. Essential oils. I'll put some essential oils on. <laughs> Sometimes music. <laughs> yeah, I'll put some music on and I put the kids to bed and I and it's just her time so that she can get her mind rested mm-hmm. and her spirit rested. And, and that's what we need to be doing. This is what a marriage after God looks like. It's not just all in my wife. It's teamwork. Um, if you look at almost every scripture in the Bible about children, it's always t- tied to the fathers. Mm. Okay. So that should tell you how much weight should be on you as a father, that you are teaching your children, that you are discipling your children, that you are responsible for your children, that your wife, you don't just leave and say, oh, my wife's going to take care of it. My wife's going to read the Bible to them. My wife's going to teach them the word of God. I will say if you, if you assume that position and you put that weight on your wife, her fears will mount. Like she will have so many more fears. And those will be legitimate fears because mm-hmm. she is doing it on her own and she has, no, she has a husband that's absent. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be that husband. You're not that husband. And because she'll be so drowning in her own fears that it'll probably stimulate fears to grow inside you. Oh, is my is my marriage not going to work out? Or are we not going to ever have intimacy because she's too tired to, you know what I mean? So like it starts mm-hmm. spiraling out of control when it, there's not a team action. Yeah. So... I hope this encourages you today. We're going to read a couple scriptures to close out. As we're talking about fears today, there was a specific scripture that was on my heart that I really wanted to encourage, um, specifically the moms with, but dads too, listen up. It's in Psalm 34, verse four. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Hmm. Now, when you are... um, acting out of fears or you're spiraling in your mind kind of out of control because of these fears that you have and you're motivated by your fears, you're not going to the Lord. Everything that you do in that moment is based off of what Mm -hmm. you believe to be true, which are the the lies and the fears that you're struggling with. And it's just going to get worse if you do not seek out the Lord. And I've Mm -hmm. experienced this firsthand. I had a almost total meltdown today because I was so emotional over these fears mm-hmm. that we just talked about. And so um, it's really important that we that we seek after the Lord and that we um, come back to His perspective and what His truth is for our life and family. Right. So we walk through a bunch of fears. This is a reality for us. Um, it's something that we're going to have to daily go through and we're going to be running to the scriptures. I'm going to be taking on my role as a spiritual leader in the home. 
to encourage you, inspire you, remind you of the truth so that you can walk in it. And I think it's really important for me to clearly communicate to you when I am having these fears, when they are coming up in my heart, because if I'm operating in them and letting them spiral in my mind and I'm not Mm -hmm. confronting them or talking to you about them, then things are just going to go haywire in our whole family. And then we uh, start feeling crazy. Yeah. (laughs) So we just want to thank you for watching today. And we just pray that this message encourages you. If any of you are going through this right now and walking through fears of a growing family. And uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell next to it. So you get notified every time we upload a video. And please leave us a comment. Let us know if you are planning on growing your family because we'd love to be excited and praise God with you. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage.